Developing your AI and LLM strategy can be really challenging because you have so many options and it can be difficult to know where to start. Well, today I'm gonna to offer a potential starting point and that is document embeddings. By the end of this video, you're gonna understand what document embeddings are, how they fit into your AI strategy, and you're gonna see them in action in two examples, semantic search and document Q&A. Let's get into it. Prolego is an AI services company that has created AI strategies and solutions for some of the biggest, most successful organizations in the world. This video is part one of our episode on embeddings for analytics leaders, product managers, basically people who want to understand what the technology can do and how to apply it to their strategy. In part two, I'm gonna show you how to install the software we use in this particular example, and we're gonna do a technical deep dive with some of Prolego's engineers so you can understand exactly how the software works. And the second part is more appropriate for data scientists and engineering teams who actually want to build solutions. Most organizations are currently trying to develop an AI or a large language model strategy and it can be really overwhelming because you have so many options and you're likely to get many different types of requests from business customers. So we always advocate taking a capabilities based approach when you're developing your AI strategy. And so you want to try to find ways to build one solution that solves all types of different problems for you. So today I'm going to show you how creating the capability of embedding is going to allow you to solve two use cases that you're almost definitely going to find inside your environment. And that is the ability to do semantic search and document Q&A. Both of these solutions are relatively straightforward to create with document embeddings. So before we jump into it, let's start off with a primer on a document embeddings so you know what we're talking about. Let's first start off with a definition. Embedding, a relatively low dimensional space into which you can translate high dimensional vectors. Now that definition came from Google's machine learning course. So hopefully that clears everything up. Of course it does not. <laughs> this definition is terrible. So I'm going to give you Kevin's definition of embeddings a set of numbers that represents the meaning of text. I like this definition a lot better because it leads us to an understanding of how you're going to use them. You can use embeddings to correlate the meaning between different texts because embeddings that are closer together in distance are more similar in meaning. This can be a little bit confusing, but it's very, very easy to understand with a simple example. And now I've got two sets of text here from children's nursery rhymes, and that is Mary had a little lamb and the cow jumped over the moon. We're gonna take each one of these sentences and we're gonna split them into two chunks of text. Chunk one is Mary had, chunk two is a little lamb, chunk three is the cow, chunk four is jumped over the moon. So now we have four chunks of text. Which of these two chunks of text are actually closest in meaning just based on the information you have so far? Well, are Mary had and jumped over the moon close in meaning? Eh, not really. How about a little lamb and the cow? Okay, well those two seem to be a lot closer in meaning because they're both farm animals. So imagine taking these chunks of text and converting them to two dimensional sets and numbers and then plotting them to figure out which ones are closest in distance. And you can think of each one of these sets of numbers as an embedding or what we like to call a vector. And in this particular instance, I have them plotted on an X, Y axis so it's easier to see. This is two dimensional space. And when we plot out the embeddings this way, we can see visually that a little lamb and the cow are the closest in meaning, and therefore they're the closest in distance in this representation. Now you could imagine a more complex story where Mary is the name of the cow. In that instance, perhaps Mary and the cow would be closer together. And that's why embeddings will vary based on the content and the context in which they're operating and why they're so powerful. Now, of course, this is a simple example. Anytime you're using embeddings, closer in distance means closer in meaning. 
Now in reality, taking a chunk of text from your environment, maybe from an email or a document or a PDF, is going to be much longer and the embeddings are going to be a lot more complex. In fact, here's an example of what the embeddings might look like. This is an embedding I generated based on the text on the left and you can see that it could be hundreds or thousands of numbers long depending on your situation. So embeddings can be super complex, but the math works exactly the same. And as we're going to see in the second video, generating them is actually really simple. In fact, it's just one little line of code that makes something so powerful. So there's a lot you can do with embeddings. Once again, a quick summary of the two key points of this primer. Embeddings are a set of numbers that represent the meaning of text. Embeddings that are closer together in distance are more similar in meaning. All right, so now let's get to the fun part. Let's jump into some examples. The first example is going to be based on semantic search. Semantic search is a fancy way of searching for text based on meaning. So you can take two different pieces of text and you can find the ones that are most similar using embeddings because once again, the closer the distance in the embeddings, the more similar the text is. This particular example of semantic search is based on a use case that we typically see with our financial services customers, and that's around the area of banking compliance. And so if you're not familiar with banks or compliance or securities regulations, don't worry, I'm gonna make it very simple for you. Securities regulators, like the SEC and FINRA and the CFTC and the states and the MSRB all have very complex rules describing what financial services companies can and can't do. And they have reporting requirements and lots of other super complicated rules that we're not going to get into today. Every financial services company has to look at all these rules and develop their own internal policies that describe how they operate. These policy documents can be thousands of pages long and the compliance department needs to keep them current with rapidly changing regulations, products, and services. So financial services companies invest a lot of time trying to trace rules to policies. I'm going to show you a way that you can greatly accelerate this process with semantic search. For this example, we're going to use a rule book from a regulatory organization called the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board or the MSRB. So the MSRB has this very long complicated rule book. As you can see, it's over 400 pages and I'm not even going to begin to pretend that I understand all these securities rules and for the purposes of our example, it doesn't matter. But what I am going to show you is how you can use semantic search to take a chunk of text from a policy and find the place inside this particular rule book that is most relevant or most similar in meaning. So let's jump into the example. So what you see on the screen here is a very simple interface that ProLegos engineers develop to demonstrate the capabilities of semantic search and document Q&A. So behind the scenes, there's some software that they've built that allow you to do semantic search and ask questions of the rule book I just showed you. And we're going to get into that in the second video. But for our purposes today, let me show you how it works. I've created a fictitious sample policy document like one that a financial services company such as a bank might have. Part of this policy has a section that talks about the rules related to advertisements and what you can say in advertisements. So in a nutshell, financial services companies are not allowed to make outlandish claims in the advertisements they put out to the public and they have to have certain caveats like you might lose money and it's not backed by the US government. So regardless, I'm gonna take this particular chunk of text and show you semantic search in action. So we're gonna go back to our search interface and I'm going to now search the MSRB rule book that I showed you a second ago using semantic search and try to find the sections of the rule book that are most similar to this section on advertisements. And boom, those are the results. So behind the scenes, what happened is that the software took this chunk of text it converted to an embedding and it found the other embeddings inside the rule book that are closest to it in meaning. And what it discovered the relevant rules like rule G21 D, which had the closest distance. And I'm not going to go ahead and read the, the section to you, but you can see just from the context and a quick scan of the screen that it deals with very similar information about 
advertisement regulations. So that is one section of the rule book that the algorithm found to be closest in distance, and you can see that there's a bunch of other ones here. So you could imagine in action, the way a compliance officer might use this is they might want to take a section of their policies and search across all the different rules from regulatory agencies to find the ones that are the most relevant to their particular policies. So that's an example of semantic search in action. Let's go to our second example called document Q&A. So document Q&A is one of the most commonly requested use cases inside the enterprise. Employees will want to have ways to ask simple questions of policies or PDFs or other information inside maybe your corporate knowledge base instead of having to read it all. And that's what you can do in document Q&A. So once again, we're gonna use this concept of embeddings. This time, we're gonna calculate the distance between a question that an employee would have and the text inside the particular rule book. And so once again, we'll use the MSRB's rule book for this example. And this time, I'm gonna go in and ask a very simple question, which I'm gonna type out here. And that is, do I have to report volunteer time with my church. So you can imagine an employee or a compliance officer in the bank wants to understand, does the MSRB have any rules about employees volunteering their time with a particular organization? And so in this particular instance, we're going to go through and find the section of the MSR rulebook that is closest in meaning, and we're gonna pass the question and the results to a GPT-4 API that's gonna do the reasoning across it. And here's what we get. And answer, based on the rules provided, there is no requirement to report volunteer time with your church. What I really like about embeddings is that they form a good starting point for your LLM strategy. Because if you develop a capability for generating them, you can solve lots of different business problems like we showed today with semantic search and document Q&A. If you're interested in understanding the technical details behind this software and downloading and running it locally on your own environment, check out the part two video where we do a technical deep dive on the solution. I know it's confusing because there are so many options, but I promise you, you are not alone. Every company is going through this right now. If you have any questions about how to start or what your options are, please feel free to reach out to us. Our contact information is on the screen. Have a fantastic day.